Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at contractionary fiscal policy, which is the government's response to an inflationary gap. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so the basic idea here is pretty straightforward. These are demand, this is government responding to an inflationary gap. So that means that inflation is getting big. <laughs> There's a lot of inflation. And we want the gut, we basically, the government wants to slow the economy down. And you'll hear this in the news all the time. The government's like, well, the United States you know, economy is expanding too rapidly and they're going to slow it down. And you're like, what? Come on, man. The expanding economy sounds great. Yeah, well, it, expanding it at a certain rate. And if you think back to your studies of economic growth, economic growth, like you want a level of like 2% growth every year, 3%, depends on your country. Um, if you're a developing nation, higher is sustainable, but you want it consistent. You don't want huge fluctuations. You don't want 4% growth and then 1% growth and three, because the price levels go all over the place. So the government wants to keep, you know, the whole idea here is to keep it right around the long range aggregate supply, short range aggregate supply, aggregate demand equilibrium. Okay. So the idea is here, if an economy has experienced a rise in aggregate demand be beyond full employment, Output, that should say output, not out, but output, it could be demand pull inflation. So inflation is happening as a result of too much demand. So the government's going to respond to use contractionary fiscal policy, which is to decrease spending, right? Decrease the G factor, the government spending factor, and or increase taxes, which is going to lead to a drop in consumption because people have less money in their pockets. All right, well, let's take a look at what that would look like on a graph. So here's the deal. The solutions to an inflationary gap, and of course, the inflationary gap is right here, right? Why is it inflationary? Well, because, because the, the government, because the economy, rather, is operating beyond the long-run aggregate supply curve. All that's happening here is that because this is not a sustainable level of, um, of output, the, the, the country can only sustain a, enough output to keep all but 5% of its workforce in place. Think of it that way. So it expands out here, and the government's like, whoa, 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 slow down. We need to get aggregate demand back in. So the way I've labeled this, really, the, the, government, the government gets involved, and it's like, whoa, we're, we're operating out here at 81, and we want to get aggregate demand to shrink and come back. And what I always say to kids in class, and I think this is really helpful, like your long run aggregate supply curve for schoolwork is what you can regularly maintain for homework. But then as you head towards final exams, what happens? Your output increases and you're, you're, you have more and more to do. And what does, this mean? what does this mean? It means that you're actually sacrificing other parts of your life in order to focus on schoolwork. And I don't know about you, but that's not really sustainable. So what the government wants to do or what your parents might say is, hey, look, you need to go to bed. <laughs> like you can't sustain that amount of output. Or like, you know, when you head towards IB exams and you got three weeks of exams, you're working beyond your real output level, what's, ma what's manageable in life. And so eventually, in the long run, though, you will come back to here. And that's kind of what the government wants to do. It's like, okay, we're operating out here. That's great. A lot of people have jobs, but price levels are going up and price levels are, are not, increased price levels are not good. So the government is going to want to figure out how to decrease aggregate demand. And remember, the components of aggregate demand, of course, are consumption, government, um, uh, C plus G plus I, right, plus X minus M. So that's, gov that's consumption. The two that are important for us here are government, right, the G and consumption. So if the government increases taxes, that means that people have less money to spend, and the C factor of aggregate demand will make this come in. And then if they also decrease government spending, which is the G factor, then we'll get back here. Okay, so the idea, of course, is for everything to come back to this original um, or long run sustainable output and price level of PY. Cool. So those are the solutions. Increase taxes, decrease government spending. And here's how you would show it on a graph. So there you have it. Right. You have what contractionary fiscal policy is and you understand how to show it on a graph. And you realize that contractionary fiscal policy is the constricting or the contracting of aggregate demand to return to a realistic and sustainable general output level of P and Y. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video on contractionary fiscal policy to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.